Welcome back to the People of the Free Gift podcast, the place where we talk about what is a cult and how do you share the gospel effectively with them. And I am Jason Oaks, your host. I'm a PhD student in New Testament at Dallas Theological Seminary. I'm a pastor in Roundup, Montana. Been here for six years. I'm the author of Sharing Jesus with the Cults, which is available on Amazon, um, either as Kindle or paperback. And um, I taught as an adjunct professor of understanding the cults for Bethel Seminary San Diego for a couple of years. And so today we are going to be examining the Jehovah's Witness uh, organization and asking the question, is it a cult? Is it fair to use that term? Now, if you haven't seen my video um, that I did a few weeks ago, and we talked about the characteristics of a cult, and these are commonly known characteristics, and there's 10 in the major category, and we're going to be examining those. But then in each of those major categories, there's sub practices, and we're also going to be examining those and asking the question, is it fair to call Jehovah's Witnesses a cult? And um, spoiler alert, yes, it is fair. So let's go ahead and dive in. If this is the kind of material that you guys like, then please subscribe to the channel, share these videos. I've kind of shared on my previous video that um, I am very busy. And so when my subscriber count goes up, I do work on a new video. So if you would like to see more of this content, then please help me get the word out. And it's an encouraging way for us to work together. And uh, you guys came through. I was sitting at 927 um, after the last video. It's up to 934 right now. So uh, that's why I'm putting out this video today. So Jehovah's Witnesses, the first major category of a cult is that they have a centralized leadership structure. And that, of course, is the Watchtower organization in New York in their headquarters. So absolutely, yes, they do meet that description. Now, here's what we mean by that. First of all, do they claim that they receive their authority from God? Yes, they believe that they are the faithful and discreet slave spoken of by Jesus, that they have a prophetic sense in which, yes, they receive their authority from God. Do they speak on God's behalf? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, only Jehovah's Witness produced material um, is acceptable uh, to read. And more on that later. So they're never wrong. Yes. And in fact, even when they're wrong, they're not wrong. Even when they have new revelation that replaces the old, they're still not wrong. And you can't question them. They must always be followed. Yes, absolutely. Can't question them. Must follow them. And do they interpret scripture for you? Yes. That's in fact what the purpose of the uh, headquarters is about. The Watchtower and Awake magazines that come out, um, that's exactly what they are doing is they are interpreting scripture for you. So major characteristic number two through five it comes as the BITE model, which is an acronym that was developed by Stephen Hassan, Behavior Control, Information Control, Thought Control, Emotional Control. And so do they practice behavior control? Yes, absolutely they do. What do we mean by that? So the group controls your time. Yes. And in fact, this is a, a mandatory requirement for Jehovah's Witnesses. They have to put in a certain amount of time and report that time to their leaders. And they used to spend most of that time being out and about, uh, going door to door. Now, with recent developments, they've had to shift that and what that looks like, but they still have high demands on their time. Group controls your money. Uh, you may disagree with me with this. And this one's in red. And what that means is I have not seen sufficient evidence to put this as a practice of this group. And this is why I conclude it so that you can let me know if you have personal experience or you have knowledge that requires for me to include this. I have no problem uh, editing this video, remaking this video in the future. So I would love to hear from you on that. Group controls your relationships. Yes, in fact, for a Jehovah's Witness, uh, most of the time, your only interaction with 
non-Jehovah's Witnesses is so that you can convert them. Um, and in fact, uh, outside of just the normal expectations that you're going to have a job, you're going to have um, different associations because of different activities that you participate in, your relationship should be Jehovah's Witness based. Group controls your eating habits. I don't see any kind of evidence of a dietary code um, within Jehovah's Witnesses. Group controls your clothes. Again, I don't see any kind of uh, evidence of a, a dress code within Jehovah's Witnesses. Participation in bizarre rituals. I don't, again, see evidence of this. So a major category, number three, information control. Do they control information? Absolutely they do. And so we count that one. You're only allowed to re read group produced materials. Yes, in fact, this has been known to be so extreme that if you try to hand Jehovah's Witnesses um, anything that's not produced by the organization, they're not even supposed to take it from you. They're supposed to just let it fall to the ground. Group withholds information. Uh, most definitely they do. And, and I would say particularly when it's embarrassing to the organization. And But there's other things that they definitely withhold information from their members. Group lies to its members or non-members. So definitely when it comes to the um, older prophecies or teachings that they are no longer teaching or the time came and went and it didn't happen, uh, they definitely lie to their members about those things. Um, in regards to non-members, I've not really found that this is a practice um, necessarily that way, but they definitely do lie. And they definitely do change their history, which is our next criteria. And uh, so they, they used to teach things that they don't teach now, even uh, changes that they've made in the New World Translation that they just kind of like uh, tuck away in silence. Um, they definitely change their history. Pyramid style doctrines. I don't really see evidence of this one. Encourage member to spy. Now, this is an interesting one because up until recently, when I originally was putting this video together, I would have said no. And then I had personal experience with a Jehovah's Witness saying that there was somebody else that was going to be sent to uh, come with them to, to make sure that nothing else was said about them. And uh, I had to say, yep, that's definitely spying. So, major category number four, thought control. Do they control thoughts? Yes, absolutely they do. Uh, this is otherwise, you could call it mind control. Uh, not brainwashing, mind control. They're different. So, not allowed to ask questions. Absolutely not. Uh, you are supposed to trust what the leaders tell you, even if it doesn't make sense, even if you don't understand it, even if you're having doubts, you're not supposed to express those doubts or ask questions. Taught thought killing techniques. I have not experienced that with this group. Um, have with others, definitely. Contention is of the devil. No, and in fact, I would say that this is one of the more contentious groups. Uh, they have no problem getting into an argument with you. They have no problem being condescending to you. Um, they, they definitely um, like debate. No legitimate reason for leaving the group. Uh, no, they are the true church. They are Christianity. That If you leave the group, there, there's no reason that you would ever leave the group. There's nothing else for you outside the group. Okay, attack the person instead of facts. Uh, like I said, they can be condescending sometimes, but I don't really find that they, they, they're, they're, they like reasoned uh, arguments. And like I said, they like debate. So no, there's no ad hominem stuff going on there. They are taught to put their doubts on the shelf. Uh, yes, uh, this is something like, like I said, you, you can't question, uh, you're not supposed to doubt. And so if you have doubts, then that's you, that's on you, then you need to just deal with those. Um, and you're not even going to find answers to them. You just have to deal with them. Okay, dismiss scary facts. Yes. Um, if you bring up a fact that is not convenient to them or to their belief system, then yes, they're definitely going to shy away from that. Um, 
All right, so major category number five, emotional control. And so do they control emotions? Yes, they do. All right, emotions are the source of truth. This is something I don't find to be the case with this group. Um, they, like I said, they like logic, they like reason, uh, they might fudge the facts around a little bit to get there, but they don't rely as much on emotions. Manipulation, most definitely, they manipulate one another, uh, they manipulate the truth, um, there's, so there's a lot of manipulation going on there. Peer pressure is just kind of a form of manipulation, so yes, they absolutely do, and we talked about spying on one another earlier. Social consequences, most definitely, this is one of those groups that if you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, because your social network has been tied up in that group, then you are pretty much left on your own and you know you're you're going to a bad place you know like bad things are going to happen to you so yes fear and guilt absolutely they use fear and guilt in fact i would say a lot of uh times even if you just look at a watchtower or awake magazine you see uh you know images of punishment and armageddon and all those kind of things almost constantly so yes Good feelings from God, bad feelings from Satan. I don't see that in this group. Irrational fears of leaving the group or other fears. Yes, I would definitely say that's a part of this. Use of past sins against you. This is definitely one of those things they do. Um, information that you share and you're vulnerable and you're looking to them for help, they will use against you. Yes. No forgiveness uh, no, there is absolutely no knowledge that you have eternal life. Um, and in fact, their belief about heaven and only a certain amount of people who are going to go there. Um, and you don't even know that until you stand before God on judgment day. So no. Double bind. I don't see evidence of the double bind being used by this group. Number six, major category, high demand discipleship. Most definitely they fit into this category. And in fact, this is kind of like almost like a summary term that you could use to describe the whole um, mind control and bite model uh, method of discipleship. But there are some distinctives we have under this category here. So covering theology, do they believe that? No, they don't teach covering theology specifically. Um, and this kind of has to do more with that, like you are accountable to a head who is accountable to a head and kind of thing. I don't really see that in this organization. It's kind of like you have the leadership and then you have everybody else. Group makes major decisions for you. Yes, most definitely. Uh, they are very controlling and have a lot of influence over your life. Fear that bad things will happen if you don't comply. Is This goes along with the whole irrational fears, fears of leaving the group, all those kind of things. One-on-one -on -one discipleship, no, I don't really see that in this organization. Yes, they kind of do their role plays uh, based off of the things that, they, that come out in the Awake magazines and the Watchtower magazines, but I don't really see the one-on-one the -on -one model in this group. Uh, and so... Uh, this is really the um, falls outside Christian doctrine, the major category, uh, number seven, I believe we're on. And yes, they, um, uh, they believe that all have sinned. There it is. <laughs> I kind of got them backwards here. Okay, so uh, number seven category, they fall outside core Christian doctrine. Yes, they most definitely do. What is that core Christian doctrine? We talked about one, all have sinned. The next one, the deity of Christ, yes, uh, they believe that Jesus is a created being, that he in fact is Michael, the archangel, through whom God created everything else, all other things, as it says in their uh, translation of Colossians. And so, yes, they, believe, they don't believe in the deity of Christ, so they are outside of Christian doctrine. Humanity of Christ, yes, they believe he was human. And the gospel, they don't believe that Jesus died for our sins, rose again from the dead, physically, bodily, and that we're saved by grace. So no, they don't believe in that. The physical resurrection, no, they do not believe in a physical resurrection. They believe that Jesus kind of vanished. And uh, so that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay. Salvation by grace alone through faith alone, absolutely not. They are very works-based. And, uh, and pretty much everything they do. 
major criteria number eight scripture twisting and yes they absolutely twist the scriptures inaccurate quotation uh yes in fact the new world translation uh the way that they say the word was a god in john 1 and he created all other things in colossians 1 most definitely inaccurate quotation Twisted translation, again, just what I just said, New World Translation definitely teaches Jehovah's Witness doctrine, even when it's not in the original text. Ignoring context, yes, uh, and that's how, if you cherry pick verses, that's how you get a lot of deviant doctrines, or you ignore other verses that teach something that brings a more balanced view of things. Wordplay. Uh, definitely the whole stake versus cross thing falls into that category. Uh, speculative readings, I don't find that to be the case with this group. Uh, they, Like I said, they, they tend to try to look at the text and see what it says, but uh, they don't speculate. So spe selective citing, and again, just like I said, you look at one verse that leads one way, and then you ignore other verses that might bring a balanced approach. Inadequate evidence. Uh, since they don't really base their um, narrative off of anything other than, you know, the biblical narrative, then no, that is not something I find with this group. Rejecting biblical authority. Yes, they absolutely reject biblical authority by having their own leadership and in intermediary between God and man um, and having their new doctrines and revelations. Redefining terms, yes, absolutely. Uh, so the terms of, you know, Christ, Jesus, um, salvation, uh, cross versus stake, all, all of those things, they definitely redefine terms. So major category number nine, unique scripture. Yes, they most definitely have unique scripture. Do they have their own translation? Yes, the New World Translation. Do they have new revelation? Yes, the Watchtower organization uh, playing a somewhat prophetic role in their organization. Do they have additional scriptures? I would say yes. The Wake Watchtower, all Jehovah's Witness produced material is on the same level because it's been put out by the Watchtower organization. Unique interpretation? Yes, they most definitely have a unique interpretation. And then major criteria number 10, the one true church. Do they believe they're the one true church? Yes, they absolutely believe they are the one true church. All right, so do they believe in a worldwide apostasy? Yes, they are part of the restoration movement that happened early in the 19th century in American church history, uh, believing the church not needed, needed not to be reformed like Luther, but absolutely, absolutely re, um, restored back to it been completely lost from the earth. Corruption of the Bible, yes. Um, and they would basically say that, you know, their inserts in the New World Translation as well as their theology had been lost. Uh, they have the view of Arius actually, who was condemned at the, you know, Council of Nicaea and their, their theology matches that. So yes, the Bible has been corrupted. Nobody else is saved outside of the group. Absolutely, they are the one true church. They are Christianity. If you don't believe what they believe, you don't submit to their leadership, you're not saved. Do they have the most correct book on the face of the earth? Yes, absolutely. And even when it changes, it's still the most correct book on the face of the earth. And do they have the best approach to Christianity? Yes, they absolutely believe they have the approach to Christianity. There is the only legitimate approach to Christianity. So how do we land? So I said up front, they are most definitely a cult and they scored on the major categories, 10 out of 10. 100% they're absolutely a cult. And so in terms of specific practices of how those 10 are fleshed out, they practice 71%, 44 out of 62 of those things. And so I hope this has been helpful and um, hope I've given you something that you can think about and digest, whether you're a part of this group, you've come out of this group, you minister to this group. I would love to hear from all of you. If you like this material, like I said, um, then subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, all those things that uh, you do on Facebook and YouTube. And 
Uh, if you're interested, pick up my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts. It helps to support this ministry. And I also have a Patreon. All the links are going to be down below in the description. Um, I have a Patreon. I also have a merch store if you want to get some people the free gift merch. Um, and the Patreon, uh, the book is actually free for anybody who... Um, supports me on patreon i'm also looking to develop other materials um for you guys on their uh, courses uh, that would be helpful things of that nature and so consider uh, checking that out as well i also want to throw out the offer as i always do if you have uh, if you are in one of these groups um, if you are have come out of one of these groups if you minister to one of these groups i would love to interview you on my channel and uh, so uh, reach out to me if you're interested in that. And um, until next time, may God's grace be with you.